So we're going live with everyone. Good morning, everyone. Uh, afternoon for some people and very early for others. Uh, we are excited from AFSM to bring to you today the webinar. And we know that uh, our president of AFSM, uh, would like to be here right now, but he has gotten tied up in traffic and will be um, here early, as soon as the traffic lets him. But um, in his place, I would like to welcome you all and tell you how excited we are that we're bringing you this webinar on long-term care as a result of a collaboration between two of the committees. It's your AFSM working for you, uh, Health and Pension Committee in collaboration with the Healthy Aging Committee has identified this as a concern for everyone, not only for those of us who think we may eventually need that for ourselves, but for our families, how are we going to navigate all of the, the ways and means about it? And for those of us who are also caregivers of people who need long-term care. Um, we would like to let you know that our goal for today is that once you have come through this webinar, you will have an understanding of the basics of long-term care. What, how, why, and how to negotiate your own planning. And in particular, how long-term care is in some ways supported by different options within our own SHI. And in order to do that, we have come up with a distinguished panel of experts, and I think you'll be very impressed with them. And uh, before we go into that, I'm gonna do a few housekeeping things and let you know that um, there is a lot of information going to be discussed today. We will have this recorded and any of the PowerPoints that are shown will also be on our website. It will be additionally post posted on the PAHO website on healthy aging. So without further ado, um, I would like to then go through what we are going to do in each session. There will be three different speakers. Uh, we'll talk about long-term care and long-term care insurance. We'll talk about what the history of WHO health insurance, SAF health insurance has been with long-term care and what we're doing with it right now. And then we will go through the present rules and see how in some way they may assist in the needs that we have as we deal with long-term care. So um, I'd like to introduce our first speaker. Martha Pelais is a former Pahohu Regional Advisor. She's a recognized international expert on healthy aging, and she is the present chair of the Healthy Aging Committee in AFSM Pahohu. So she's going to give us an introduction to what is long-term care, why we need to consider it, what is long-term care insurance, the what's and how's of the costs, the considerations that we should have as we do our own planning, and something about the situation in our region in particular in long-term care in the different countries. Martha? Thank you, Carol. And I'm going to share my screen right now so you can all see. Um, okay, 
so you're seeing my my slides. Uh, because I'm going to be speaking in English, uh, you will see my slides in Spanish. So those of you who are uh, more fluent in Spanish than English, you will be able to uh, be with us. So, uh, well, I uh, I don't know why I'm not able to. Oh, okay, okay. So, <laughs> the gift of longevity. Um, as you all know, we are celebrating the fact that we are living longer every year. Uh, so. Is the, the this is something to be grateful for, except that there is a, something to longevity that is not so good, and that is that many of us live longer, but we also live longer with more chronic conditions um, that in some sometimes they become really disabling conditions. So. 49% of men, 64% of women, so the majority of us who actually get to be uh, 65 years old during our lifetime, we're gonna need some healthcare, some, some long-term care. <laughs> um, and of those who need long-term care, um, a good portion, 14% of those who need long-term care are gonna need it for more than two years. And they may need it at uh, full time, which means that um, long term care, when you need it for more than uh, a few months, uh, becomes very expensive. And if you need it for many years, you have to plan for it. So uh, let's let's see what uh, WHO says about long term care. It says that it includes activities to ensure that people with or at risk of a significant ongoing loss of intrinsic capacity can maintain a level of functional ability consistent with their basic rights, fundamental freedom, and human dignity. Long-term care addresses both of the health and also the personal care and social needs of individuals. So that's really important. It may be continuous or intermittent, but it's very different from your short-term care. So um, this statement is important because it reminds us that it is long-term care is a complex package. Um, uh, the medical care, or the care that takes care of our health needs, that's in most cases going to be covered with our health insurance. Personal care and social needs, that is non, the non-medical care, um, may include uh, assistance with our activities of daily living, going to the bathroom, getting dressed, um, assistance with uh, shopping and assistance with eating, uh, mobility, helping us to get in and out of bed, those kinds of things that are really part of our diminished functionality. Those personal care and social needs uh, are not going to be, for the most part, covered by our health insurance, and, and we need to really um, plan for it. We need to know how we're going to meet those needs. So I'm going to introduce you uh, now uh, my mother. Um, my mother, in this picture, she was 96 years old. She was enjoying a walk in the park with the help of her walker. And of course, with my help, I drove her to the park and I kept company. Uh, she died two years later. And uh, she died at home and she received care at home. Her care was progressive. We began with a few hours every week. And uh, you know, during the, uh, she lived right next to my brother. So my brother was there uh, for things she needed. Uh, we had my, uh, her grandsons uh, sleep at night with her. 
so she would not feel alone. Um, so, so it was actually easy at the beginning. If I lived in Miami. I started commuting to New Orleans where she lived, not because she needed me, but because I wanted to be her, with her. I was in charge of her health care, uh, doctor's visits and everything that had to do with her health. So during the last year of her life, we finally enrolled her in hospice, or she enrolled herself in hospice. Uh, her mind was intact until the end. And eventually she had 24 seven nursing uh, home care. We had a living person that helped her with all of her activities of daily living. And with hospice, we, have a, we had a doctor and a nurse that came regularly to see her. Um, when we decided to uh, add on that uh, that home that living home care, she told her friends, "My daughter is uh, is hiring a babysitter." And I said to her, "No, we're hiring a secretary. This is a helper for you. You tell her what you want to do when you want to do it." She liked that, and and I think we managed um, her care during the last two years through a combination of family support, hospice, um, and, and, uh, and, and caregivers at home. So all of that can happen at home. It can happen in the, um, assisted living. It can happen in a nursing home. Is the setting is really uh, depends on what's available for your needs and your choices on how and the cost of, 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 the, of the care. What contributes to our needs to, uh, to long-term care is really uh, beginning with chronic illnesses. Of our, we can live very healthily with chronic illness, but and we want to manage our chronic diseases so that we can keep function. But remember, when uh, chronic disease starts uh, uh, impairing our ability to live independently, then long-term care kicks in. Remember, it's our intrinsic capacity, it's our function that determines whether we need care or not. So it, uh, when those are functional limitations that are really the results of, of diminished intrinsic capacity. Um, that's why it's so important to maintain ourselves vital, exercise, maintain your muscle strength, do everything you can to keep your intrinsic capacity strong because that will delay or postpone and diminish the amount of time that you may need long-term care. However, we also have to deal with the uh, cognitive impairments such as Alzheimer's disease and other dementias that is um, always uh, a, a, a driver for long-term care. Once a person really uh, becomes cognitively impaired, her need for long-term care um, increases very rapidly. So as we have said, and, and I don't want to repeat too much of this, but it's important to remember that long-term care is complex. We have personal care. We have the need for assistance with chores at home. We need to be constantly modifying the environment in which we live. But we also have medical needs, and those are locally uh, covered by a wonderful health insurance that PAHO at WHO provides us. And uh, we have also nursing need, uh, nursing care um, that sometimes is also covered by our insurance if it's medically needed, or medication management, and some therapies. So all of that is the package that we're looking at. If you want to deal more deeply into the topic of long-term care, especially as it uh, uh, is experienced in different countries in the region, uh, PAHO WHO have resources in the web. Uh, PAHO has this framework 
for uh, the development of continuous and uh, integrated uh, long-term care services in Latin America and the Caribbean is in their website. Bajo, um, for the decade of healthy aging, since long-term care is one of the work areas, there is also a very good situational analysis of what are the uh, care uh, services uh, for long-term care in, in Latin America and the Caribbean. That is also in the FAHO website. But uh, FAHO is not the only international organization that is interested in long-term care. The International Social Security Association, ISA, has uh, long-term care services in selected countries of the Americas. And by the way, all of these documents are available, available in Spanish and English. And uh, we find uh, that uh, the ISA documents covers uh, long-term care assistance in Argentina, Canada, Chile, Costa Rica, and Uruguay. So that um, is, again, a very useful resource. Um, and uh, more lately, uh, the Inter-American Development Bank has become extremely interested in long-term care. And in this particular document, which is in their website, uh, they look not only at, um, at the services, in other words, they look more at the cost and at the way to provide the services. Um, and uh, we will find that uh, as we read the, uh, uh, the bead uh, document, uh, they concur, we concur with everything they say is uh, they claim that long-term care insurance in the region is extremely expensive, is out of reach to most people, and that um, the cost of providing care using your personal uh, financing is also extremely high and prohibited to many people. So they, uh, this is an interesting document that you may want to look at. So let's talk about um, long-term care insurance. First of all, why long-term care insurance? Most of us really uh, <laughs> one would, would have liked to have long-term care insurance because of the peace of mind. That's what insurance is all about. It's a peace of mind for the future. It covers a variety of services. Um, it covers the whole gamut from domiciliary to home care to residential, from personal care to uh, to uh, some of the um, settings where those care can be integrated and provided. Uh, so it covers your nursing home, assisted living facility, uh, costs, so forth. Um, and so on. It's a very comprehensive package that gives you peace of mind. Now, the majority of the policies that were offered during the 80s and the 90s were extremely affordable, were affordable, I won't say extremely, were affordable, and they were very generous. Most of them have dramatically changed, and many of them have gone bankrupt. Why? Because um, we've lived longer than they expected with chronic conditions, and the cost of long-term care has actually become very high. So uh, if today you do not have long-term care insurance and you're 65 or over, I would say it's probably not longer an option. Um, so um, they will eliminate, they will not insure anyone with a chronic condition that is already showing that it will need the insurance uh, it, it, before they die. And, um, and, and, the, and they will really decline it depending on age. So whole long-term care insurance, if you have it, is great. If you don't have it and you're older than 65, it may not be an option to you, except that um, uh, it's something that each one of us may want to actually call an agent and see what they say. Um, I, I can 
I, I can bet that you hear more or less what we have said today here. The cost of, of long-term care will depend on the age when you buy the policy. It will depend on how much they will include in the, in the policy. In other words, is the policy for a million dollar, two million dollars, for a hundred thousand? What is it, the policy for? And the amount is really a function of um, how many days they they in the, of, lo of long term care days or years they will cover. They will co once the care long term care starts, the policy may say we'll support five years or we support three years. It used to be that they were unlimited. That's no longer available in most markets. And, um, and it will say we'll cover $100 a day or $500 a day or whatever the, the policy indicates. That's what actually gives you the full amount that the policy is worth. It used to be that these policies um, were, uh, from the beginning, they would commit not to increase the premium. So you started with a certain amount um, in, in premiums uh, yearly, and that was supposed not to change. Um, that's no longer true. Most policies have either gone bankrupt if they didn't change the, uh, the premiums or they have increased the premiums or decreased the amount of, of, of time that they will provide the services. So, so the, so, uh, I would I would claim that at this point, for most of us, long-term care insurance may not be an option. But again, I don't want to discourage anyone from calling an agent and finding out for yourself. So I'd like to um, just talk about someone uh, called Teresa. She's 75 years old. Uh, she lives with Parkinson. Uh, she worked at Pajo. Uh, for many years. She's a widow, has many children, uh, but they all live in different parts of the hemisphere. Uh, she owns her house. Um, she's lived comfortably so far with her pension and, and, and savings. Um, the ins Bajo Insurance has actually been able to provide her with good health care, but she no longer can live by herself. So at this point, Teresa has to do one thing first, and that is to decide what does she want? What does she want? Um, it's very important to, that we not only think about what we want now, but what would we want if we were in Teresa's place? What would we want? Would we want to live independently? Do we want to be near our children? Um, do, do I want to stay where I am? I like my neighborhood. I have friends. I have neighbors. Um, will I be able to pay for my care uh, so I'm not a burden on my family? Would I be I, would I be happy uh, knowing that um, I'm going to have good care if I stay in my house or if I go somewhere else? What do I want? And, and it's important that we do that exercise today, that we think ahead and we try to imagine what we would like, and that we have a good conversation with our family, with our support system, so that we're all on the same page. That, that's the first thing we need to do. Think about what you may want. Then you need to think about the options that you have to get what you want, simple. <laughs> if I want to stay in my house, but my house is two stories with lots of steps and stairs, um, my bathroom it has a top and I'm finding it more difficult to get in and out of it. So what do I have to do if I want to stay home? That's the first step, one of the many steps that I have to take, but I have to 
look at that as a, if it's an option, what do I have to do about it? If I want to be near my children, what are my options? Live with them? Maybe not. Uh, sell my house and buy, but are they going to stay where they are? <laughs> so you need to have a conversation about you want to move at this stage. Um, you know, what is the plan and what uh, is the benefit? Uh, if I want to go to a, I keep saying to myself, this is my personal choice. I, when I can no longer take care of myself, I like to go to an assisted living facility of a life care community. So then the question is, do you know any? Have you been inside of any? Have you walked through it? Have you talked to people who live there? Have you asked questions about what is life like in those facilities? So you can really have a realistic idea of what you want. So then I have to actually say to myself, how am I gonna pay for it? Do I have enough resources? I was planning a trip around the world. Will I let us put some of that money aside so that I can pay for my long-term care when the time comes? Um, so once I know what I want and I know what my options are, it is really essential that we um, that we do a financial planning for our long-term care. It's, it's always uncertain when we plan for five, 10 years ahead, but not planning, not having financial plan for your care may be more disastrous. So think about that. Um, usually, what are the resources we have to pay for our health care, for our long-term care? Well, usually, obviously, our personal funds, uh, our savings, our pensions. We're no longer working at that age, so there's no more income coming from work. So what we have is what we have. Um, if we have investments, and uh, they better be secure investments because you don't want to one day find out that everything went um when oops um so you really want to you also need to realize that if you have properties those properties may be sold that's also another source of income so make sure you put you know just analyze carefully what you have um, if you had uh, long-term care insurance, of course, that would be your piece of mind financing. Some people look at reverse mortgage or some people look at certain um, uh, life, uh, life insurance policies that have some cash values, annuities and trusts. All of, if you have any of that, all of that is what you put into your, into your um, uh, thinking and, and planning. Uh, some some of our uh, long term care needs are met with some community services that may be uh, low cost or no cost. Uh, for instance, we also those uh, provided by the council and agent. So I need to know what's available in my community. Am I going to be able and uh, to access some community resources? And uh, and of course, uh, you know, I know that. Uh, and we'll hear more today about how some of our medically needed services will be covered uh, at this point from our uh, health insurance. And of course, we we have to know that we need a village. We need family, friends, and relatives <laughs> that may actually provide that socialization and all of that. Um, will make uh, a whole picture of where you would want to be when you need long-term care. So we'll have some questions at the end, I'm sure, but I need to finish. Uh, my conclusion is simple, plan, plan, plan. Uh, be creative, think outside of the box, but make sure that uh, you, uh, know what your resources in your community are, that you visualize uh, the way you want to live, even when you need long-term care, and that you make a financial plan for it. So that's, that's um, the end of my presentation. 
And I hope it has actually as at least provoked some questions in your mind. Thank you, Marta. We a very interesting idea and just three principal questions for us in this planning process. They're all a question of possibilities. One, what do we want? Two, how can we explore all the resources and options possible for what we want? And three, how are we going to pay for it? Mm -hmm. That's what this planning process is all about. Now, we have activated the question and answer function of the Zoom so that anyone who has questions that they would like to ask the participants, we will have a question and answer session at the end. And we already have a number that have been submitted on email. So we will treat questions and answers. But if you have any additional questions, please bring them up to us uh, by typing them in your question and answer. And now, uh, before we go on to our second speaker, we will have a delayed uh, message from our president, Hernan. Thank you very much, Carol. And I do apologize for being a little late, but uh, I had another webinar early this morning uh, this, in this case, is for our future, for our future colleagues who are about to retire from Pajo. So that, that went very well, and then I have to transfer myself to the other part of town. So that that would that went really late. So anyway, welcome everybody. Although it's a little late to welcome, but anyway, uh, I think this webinar is particularly important because it puts us in a, a, a mode that I think is extremely important for AFSM, which is not just to deal with the traditional activities that the that the associations of retirees do you know pension plans and, uh, and ins health insurance but also when considering other aspects of healthy aging and i think that the one that you're touching is extremely important uh the, the one of long-term care from my own personal experience i had to deal with long-term care in chile and in the united states and if you're not prepared it's extremely expensive in both places, obviously, outside the United States, it's less money, but as in comparison with your average income, is extremely expensive just as well. So I think that this is a welcome seminar. Uh, everybody, of course, will have its own personal and particular conditions and situations, but I strongly su suggest that you deal. And one aspect that, uh, if I may, that uh, Martha did not enter, for those of us who have relatives of children working in the federal government in the United States, there's a very reasonable long-term care insurance for parents of workers in the federal government that I strongly <laughs> recommend for those who have that situation to explore it. I am very procrastinating, too much of a procrastinator, I haven't joined it, but the last time I checked it, it was like $80 a month, which as insurances go, is extremely cheap. So uh, I, I wanted to just to add that. So thank you very much. And I, th I appreciate all the effort that our colleagues are made. It's not easy to organize this. And this is a topic that is very hot and which unfortunately doesn't have easy answers. So by necessity, we have to give uh, options, but not necessarily answers, which what we, we all know would like. So thank you very much, Martha. Thank you very much, Carol. And please go ahead with the seminar. Okay, thank you. And um, I'd like to introduce our next speaker. Uh, Samantha Belshears is the head of our global SHI WHO insurance. So if you think we have questions about planning and long-term care, imagine trying to manage thousands of participants in a hundred and 94 countries. So um, without further ado, Samantha is going to lead us through how SHI has been considering long-term care, both from a historical point of view and from where they are right now. Thank you, Samantha. Thank you very much, Carol. Um, I must say, I really feel honored to be invited today and um, I really am delighted to be with you. Um, 
I am the head of, as Carol has said, the global health insurance based in Switzerland. I've been doing this job for over 15 years and um, I've been working with Carol on this particular subject for 15 years. And I want to thank Carol personally, because you all should know that uh, Carol has really been a big driver behind everything that SHI currently has today um, on long-term nursing and is also helping lead the direction in which we want to go in. So a big thank you, Carol, for, for, for that. Um, so just to give you a little bit of background, um, personally, I thought, well, you know, SHI isn't bad when it comes to long-term nursing. Um, but I didn't actually know how really good it was. And maybe some of you have no idea how good we are, but the Joint Inspection Unit of the uh, UN Secretary General last year decided to do an investigation of all of the SHIs in the UN system and find out um, how they're all doing. And one of the benchmarks was to look at the long-term nursing. And when we received the report this year, we were really pleased and very surprised to see that WHO was one of the best. There are probably only two others that are similar to us and have the same benefits. So um, just bear that in mind that we're actually not doing too, too badly. So to give you some history, it's been several decades that WHO, PAHO um, have been working on long-term nursing. Back in 2011, when I look at the rules, we already had $100 a day for long-term nursing and domiciliary nursing care. Um, 2013, we formed a working group and we uh, asked our governing body to do this working group to see um, what, which direction we wanted to go in. And this is again where Carol came in. Um, in 2014, the working group reported back and we decided that we needed to review the definition of long-term nursing care, review best practices, look at the notion of dependency, look at the costing, make cost comparisons, and, and then decide what direction we wanted to go in. Now, just so you know, the governing body meets one to two times a year. So then 2015, um, this was all brought back to the governing body and we decided that it was really big, too big for the governing body to deal with. So we met with the Department of Health Systems in WHO and PAHO, the Department of Aging. Um, we tried to find a consultant as well so that we could do a RFP to find a real professional body to do a study for us. By 2016, we'd managed to benchmark with the other organizations and we'd managed to identify a consultant. We wrote up the terms of reference, and um, by 2017, we'd had the report, which made several recommendations. One was that we should reimburse the diapers, nappies, uh, for incontinence. Two was that we should continue with the benefits that we have. So that was continue with the $100 for the long-term nursing, that we shouldn't touch that for the time being. We should continue with all of the other appliances that we have. So if you have a look at the SHI rules, you will see that we have things like a medical bed. We have medical mattresses. We have walkers. I saw that, that Martha, that your mother had a, had a walker. Um, SHI reimburses that if you have a prescription. We have wheelchairs. We have a, a type of mobility scooter. So we decided that, you know, we would keep all of those. We also said, though, that we should look at a home improvements and there was a recommendation to say $5,000, a lifetime um, benefit to be able to adapt to home to allow you to stay in it longer. So that could have been a chairlift, that could have been uh, the shower, handles on doors, pools to help you, etc. We also said that we needed to improve the definition of long-term nursing to see whether we could broaden the type of person that could give that type of nursing care. Okay, so we were looking at all of those. And of course, we had to see if it was affordable. So we made the recommendations to the Director General and the Director General approved instantly the incontinence um, you know, appliances. He approved that we kept the status quo with all of the other benefits, but he said we had to look at the $5,000 lifetime um, benefit and also the $100 to see if we could break it down to look at the different dependency levels to make it more accessible and have a broader uh, type of person who could give this nursing care. So you wanted to see if it was affordable. 
So that was 2017. So SHI Secretariat then contacted our actuaries and we asked them if they could cost it. And they said they couldn't. We contacted several other actuaries and several other specialists and we got nowhere. Fast track now to 2019, we had no costing. And thank you, Carol, again, because Carol raised it to the governing body um, via somebody who's on. We have two levels of governance. Carol's on one. And on the second um, governing body, Carol raised it to somebody who's on that and asked it to be put on the agenda. So it was raised to say, where are we? What are we doing? We never got the costing. So we decided that we would have to form a new working group that would look at all of this. So by this time now, we were coming to 2022. Um, we drew up an RFP. We identified a company who would, could do the costing. And where we are actually today now is we have the costing of the $5,000 and of the $100 a day. Uh, the working group was supposed to actually meet this Monday, but it was postponed. Um, we hope to meet in the coming weeks where we will discuss this costing and then they will make a recommendation to the governing body. They will discuss again and then we will see how we move forward, whether it will go to the director general, whether there will be any changes. But I just want to go back again to say that we already have something that's quite unique in the UN system. It's also quite unique in health insurances because what we're supposed to do is to cover the uh, important part of healthcare. So the fact that there is up to $3,000 a month that can help with your long-term nursing needs, whether that is in an institute, whether it's at home, whether it's staying with family members, I think you know we can all agree that that's very generous. We also have other benefits so that if you have, have to go into a, a hospital for geriatrics, then obviously that's all going to be reimbursed. All of your other health care will continue to be reimbursed. Some health insurances, as you get older, cut certain benefits out. They cut out dental, they cut out optic, they ask you to pay more for that. But WHO, Powerhouse Health Insurance, doesn't do that. I hope that answers uh, what, what you were asking of me, Carol. I hope that, that that's uh, enough. Thank you. Thank you, Samantha, both for your presentation and, and for being with us today, because I know that you have a busy agenda. Um, I'd like to make a couple of comments at the end of Samantha's presentation as well. It's when we normally, we being all of us, um, value things when we need them or when we don't have them. And one of the things that happens with health insurance in general is that most of us do not read through the rules until we're needing something. And when we do, sometimes they're confusing, sometimes they're not what we want to happen. And so we come back and we say, oh, well, why, do, why don't, you know, why don't they do this? Why don't they do that? And I don't think <clears throat> there's a real recognition of all of the background work that goes through any question of our benefits, because an insurance and our health insurance is an insurance, as Martha said before, to give us peace of mind. And the goal of our health insurance says that it is to alleviate the major part of uh, costs related to medical needs, medical needs. So long-term care involves a lot more than just medical needs. And basically what I'm sure the conclusion will be is that any insurance that is not specifically set up at this point in time for long-term care is never going to balance benefits and costs. And those that do rely on the younger people to be the subscribers and to subscribe for 50 years before they really need anything. So um, I think that we are very fortunate to have the insurance that we have. And we need to know 
how can we utilize this in what comes up as needs when we are talking about long-term care. And for that, we have our next panelist and Kelly Marrero, uh, who is the head of the SHI office in Pajo. Kelly has been with Pajo for the last 10 years and at the end of 2023 became the new head of that unit. And she has been working diligently to help resolve some of the questions that were there when she arrived, which uh, had to do many of them with lack of filling staffs and vacancies and long-term uh, people with health problems, et cetera. And, uh, she also had a conflict today and has made a special effort to be with us. And uh, she's going to take us through what it is that our rules at the present time can offer us for some of the needs that come up in long-term care. Kelly? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Carol. Thank you, everybody. Um, hi, Samantha and all, all our uh, great members here. Um, I was in the previous meeting and I'm sorry I get cut because, you know, chai is an um, interesting uh, topic for everybody. So after my presentation, <clears throat> the numbers of questions were kind of interesting. And they say, Kelly, please just answer the question before you leave so we can close the, the issue. So I did. And I see in here, um, Again, a few members that also joined from the previous me meeting to this meeting. Um, so it, it's my pleasure to be here. So it's, it's, as Ms. Carol said, it's, it's my first time here. I have 10 years in the organization, uh, seven, year, seven months at this, at this month, seven months with child uh, position. It, it's my pleasure. It's every day is it's something new. Uh, it's something learning for me, but still I have a wonderful team. We have been dedicating these months to work, to respond, to serve, okay? Serve based in our rules and regulation that we can now go, uh, that our service can go beyond. Our rules are there and we have to be sure that we are in compliance with them. Um, the the this topic that Miss Carol uh, said to to talk today for us is is something that we see uh, very frequent, but definitely where we work close with Chai in Geneva, and our Chai medical advisor and our Chai officer are always willing to respond and support. What happened with this is. Always when you think about long term, please, uh, former members, please keep in mind rule B81, okay? So if the case arrives and you need a nursing uh, support help, everything that is in our um, rules is stated there. As, as Ms. Carol said, sometimes, we know that we have rules, but we don't read it until we need it. It's right. So most important thing to keep in mind today, because you say, oh, is something happening? What I'm going to do? First of all, medical report, then cost estimate and reach to us immediately. Say, Kelly, I have this situation or oh, or if not you, maybe the person that is helping you because it's it's starting to happen that somebody is helping you in your family, the spouse is helping. So, but you have the email, okay, where to communicate. I have this situation, this person has to go to a nursing care or a, or a hospice, a specific place. In Here in United States, you know that we go through Cigna. In the rest of the region, Central and South America is directly with us. So sometimes uh, something with the invoice is not clear. Just we try to say, 
go with the nurse, try to get this, you know, something that we can understand because sometimes it's, it's manually. And we say to the member, make a, make something that, that can help you to, to have the right supporting documentation because we have to, to render, you know, to present uh, the information. How you pay that? Keep in mind that you cannot pay more than $2,000 in cash, specifically in our countries in Central and South America. That 2000 is a huge amount okay, of money, but do not do that. Always use your financial um, resources, credit cards, uh, checks, something that supports you. But uh, once we receive that, we are going to put a communication with um, Geneva with our colleagues and they are going to review it and they are going to say, okay, because they, they need to approve it, okay? If you see in the rules, it is set very clear. Prior approval required for. So we are going to request the approval. Then um, uh, I, it, it is set how much is per day. So keep in mind the amount when you need the service. This is the amount, the total amount that I'm going to receive. And from that amount, the 80% is covered. And of course, this important, very important, that expense is not going to go to the uh, supplementary uh, benefits. Okay. So I will say, keep in mind for long uh, term, uh, uh, nursing care, B80, B81, and B83. That's, that is something that we have to revisit and be uh, familiar with, so to avoid any concern. I was also telling in the previous meeting, I said, if you know now what you need, it's going to be easier Okay, at the moment that the situation is present for you, so and communicate for us. I I just want to be sure. I'm just going to leave here on my chat uh, my contact because I hope everybody receive our formal communication saying, okay, if you have to to communicate with Chai, where, how, who is this team? Um, I have part of my team uh, this week on annual leave. So everybody, you know, have to go annual leave. Everybody can get sick. So that's why I, I cannot bring all my team here. Others are in front of, you know, our line, just responding um, emails. But this is basically, as Miss Carol said, what we have today, what we have to keep in mind and how we are going to communicate. The, the reimburse for those that have Chai online have to submit the information for the reimburse and we are going to process here and you are going to receive your, your payment as a regular. If it's the, the former member is in the United States, it's going to be through Cigna and you are going to receive the reimbursement through your dashboard, your your portal, you are going to put it there and you are going to receive the money in your bank account. Okay. Um, I can take questions if you have any questions. Yes, Ms. Carl. We will take all questions together and we'll go through the questions that have come in. Thank you, Kelly. I think that uh, it's important to know that of the things that have been mentioned today, the rules are posted on our website, afsmpajo.com. It says there, they're the rules as of 2023. The rules are in administrative revision and hopefully will be less confusing when they come out next year sometime. But right now, the rules have not been changed since January 2023, and they are on our website. Uh, B81 and B83, as both Samantha and Kelly mentioned, talk about hospitalization for geriatric care, hospitalization at home, uh, long-term nursing, hospice care, uh, 
B84 does talk that there are some non-reimbursable services such as help for shopping, cleaning, cooking, gardening, that kind of thing. Uh, if the person needs some therapies, you can go to the section on therapies, which starts around 100 and 103. And there is also a section on appliances and accessories that oftentimes are needed during the time when people are in long-term care. So there's a, a huge variety and, and amplitude of things that we can access through our present SHI and be very grateful for. Um, we will now move on to the questions and we'll take um, first the questions that have come in uh, earlier. A lot of people have asked both now and in uh, the question section, if this will be recorded and you can watch it later. Yes, it will be posted on both the PAHO, uh, Healthy Aging, and the uh, AFSM website. Um, it's a question that came in asking, what are our present benefits? Um, I think we probably have covered that pretty well in the in the presentations by the panelists. Um, what is the difference between an assisted living facility and a nursing home? Martha, would you like to answer that? Yes, um, in the United States, uh, let's start with that, an assisted living facility um, they come in many flavors. In other words, if you've seen one, you probably have seen one, but generally speaking, they have, uh, they offer you with a home that is a room or an apartment, depending on the cost of the assisted living. Uh, they offer you with all of your personal care. If you need assistance with bathing, if you need um, assistant transport in transporting uh, due to the doctors or shopping or whatever. Uh, they offer you uh, with uh, meals and uh, recreation. Uh, many of them have their own uh, uh, therapy department that will maintain you uh, physically fit. <laughs> if uh, So assisted living is really an uh, a, a place where you can actually don't want to live alone and receive the care you need. Uh, you go to an, an assistant living is designed to make your care be home-like, but it is provided within an organized and institutional setting. Uh, nursing homes, uh, an assistant living usually don't have a doctor on on on, on staff. They don't have uh, they have nurses aid, and sometimes they have an, uh, they do manage medication, but it's not medical. It is to meet your your um, social and personal care needs. Uh, you can bring to an assisted living. Uh, to your apartment in an assisted living facility, you can bring in home care if you if you need to for the period you need. Uh, you can actually bring hospice because it is your place of residence. Um, however, uh, the long-term care facility or nursing home is uh, is is really uh, the is is nursing driven. It has. Uh, uh, full-time nurses, licensed nurses and staff. Uh, it provides uh, medically needed help, uh, you know, with uh, in addition to the, your other um, needs, such as mobility and feeding. But uh, usually in an assisted living facility, you have to be able to assist with your care. In a nursing home, uh, they provide all of the levels of care that you need. So that's, I don't know whether that answers the question or not, but uh, that's generally speaking the, the difference between both of them. And Carol, I also want to remind you that Patricia is going to say a few words at no. the end. Right. We have, yeah. Right. Right. Um. 
We have a, another question from before, which is, does the health insurance cover whatever Medicare does not cover of post-hospital stay in a nursing home and of a health, home health aid to help at home during convalescence? I think that um, we have made clear that, uh, well, first of all, let me talk about Medicare. Medicare will pay for only 100 days of skilled nursing home care after a hospitalization. And there, will be then some backup from our insurance if the person qualifies with the medical needs. Um, and in terms of home health aids, our rules at present time state that the, the people giving the care have to be qualified in the country in which they uh, are living. And so that has to be assured before the, and there has to be a prescription from a, med a medical doctor saying, these are the needs that the person has, and they will take such and such amount of time. Um, why doesn't our SHI cover all costs if the problem is recognized as a medical condition? Samantha, would you like to answer that one? Well, I have to get such a difficult question. Thank you, Carol, for that, <laughs> and whoever asked it. But thank you. Um, what can I say? Um, you could choose to go to the most expensive hospital in the world, and there are very, very expensive ones. Uh, certainly in Switzerland, where I'm living, there are some clinics that are just outrageous. And yes, it's a hospital and yes, it's medical. Uh, should SHI cover the cost of that? I mean, we are a mutual. And um, as Carol has said, we're supposed to call, you know, cover the most important, a majority of um, all of the healthcare costs, but there has to be limits. So if you are in a place, in a hospital, and you're having medical treatment, we will cover the cost of those. But we do have limits to room rates for hospitalization. And it's the same thing as well when it comes to the long-term nursing. We have to limit it to $100. Um, and that's not necessarily going to be covering the accommodation. That's going to be covering what is medically needed, what medical treatment you're having. We won't be paying for your lodging, for your food. That is for you, for your own um, pension or whatever means you have to cover the cost of that. I don't know if I've actually covered that, Carol, but but I'm trying to say that, you know, we're, we're a mutual. Everybody's in this together. You said earlier that we're in 194 countries. We've got 43,000 participants scattered in 194 countries. And you've got very expensive places such as New York. And you've got places like Mauritania and Angola, which are very, very cheap places. And we can't have the people living in the very, very poor countries paying for all of the treatment in a very, very expensive clinic in New York because somebody has chosen to go to the best clinic in New York. So there has to be a, a payoff somewhere along, along the line. And that's why we have ceilings and limits. Thank you. Thank you. And I think that goes back to the question of what is an insurance and what is the purpose of our insurance? Uh, you always have a balance of benefits and costs. And so to increase benefits for certain areas means that you either increase the cost or you lose some other benefits. And so somehow there has to be that balance and we have to work on it. Um, next question, if the assisted living costs say $5,000 $5, per month and covers room and board and other needed care. How does one document the portion that SHI covers? Kelly, would you like to deal with that one? We are going to always to ask for a detail of the invoices. So that is the way that, that we can know 
what is covered and what is not. Because yeah, the, 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 the invoice can be $5,000, but under our rules, how much is going to cover? What concept is going to, concept is going to be covered? So I uh, know it was a, a, a room, uh, I don't know, X service. We can know, we can know uh, pay that. As we mentioned already, there will be, you know, the limit, and we are very strict with the limit. And it's not like, a, oh, Kelly is so strict. No, I'm going to send it also to Geneva, and Geneva is going to say, no, 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 rules and regulation. We have to all take care of what we can uh, be able to, to pay. Okay, thank you. Carol. Thank you. Carol, just an, uh, you can ask your assistant, if you have an assistant living, uh, uh, that uh, is providing all of the care, both personal and medical care or nursing care, you can ask that assisted living to break down the cost. So they will, they will actually give you an invoice for room and board, and they will give you an invoice for, um, for assistance. And, and, it, it, and you can actually have them break down what is medically or health related or not. Uh, most assisted living will work with you in providing a detailed invoice. Thank you. Um, in addition to which, I think that the, the, I, the rules as such state, if you cannot obtain that detailed breakdown, that they will consider 50%. Um, um, Next question. Um, in the presentation, can you give an example of how to make a claim to SHI for covered expenses if one is a residence in an assisted living or receiving home care from a qualified medical provider? I think Kelly, you've just dealt pretty pretty much with that did you want to say anything else on it yeah no no just be sure that the the nursing uh team that is in charge just issued the correct invoice the most detailed the better you know is if it's by the care from that day to this day we can know we are not there, so we are not we don't know what is going on so please ask for the most detailed invoice possible for the nurses, okay? With the amount and total, okay? That, that is uh, something. And always keep in mind that we, if we have any doubt, we have the portal. So we are going to, to send it back or reach you out to ask for more clarification, okay? Thank you. Right, and there has been some confusion, I think, with SHI online that if you send it back, then they have to reprocess the entire thing. Yeah not just send you the answer to your question. Yeah, because it um, is a, it's a dashboard, it's a portal, but doesn't, it, it works as a um, team communication. So yes, when we, that is why to avoid any delay, we prefer the most clear information. Also, you can put comments, make the comments. So with the comments, it's going to help us. If no, if we are, we try now, but if we force, we reject it. Um, sometimes we send you an email and say, what happened here? But if it's not clear at all, and if it's not correct also, we have to send it back. Um, there was one question about the key recommendations for selecting long-term care facilities. Mark, do you want to handle that one? Yes, I'll be glad to. First thing I would say is um, know what you want. Um, it is very likely that you will get uh, the information you need if you visit the place. Familiarize yourself with the place and know what you want. Some places that have a lot of marble and chandeliers and the care is terrible. So you really want, first of all, to know what do you want. You, you'd rather have Good care, then make sure you are there at different times of the day and you look at the uh, ratio of staff to resident 
um, you're perfectly able to talk to the residents and ask um, ask them, you know, but you, but visually you, first of all, you really need to feel comfortable that the place will meet your needs. Um, so first of all, it has to be licensed. It has, you have to make sure that you know what is the staff to, to resident ratio. Uh, you want to have uh, some recommendations from people who either live in the facility or actually of the fam family of people who live in the facility and you can ask for that. Uh, but I would say the most important thing is in my, in my experience is for you to do a walkthrough and make sure that all of your senses are comfortable with the place where you think you may spend the rest of your life. Um, so visually um, and, and, and socially, and do they have the kinds of activities that you may want to have? I have, uh, is, is, there, is there continuous of care or, or are they going to put you out when you're too sick? You know, there are very basic questions that you need to ask and you cannot just review those things in the web. You, you really do a, an initial web search, but then walk through. I have a long uh, life care community uh, that is not very far from where I am. And I think that will be a place where I like to spend the rest of my life when I need it. So I'm gonna volunteer there uh, at least once a week because being there will let me know if that is really the place I want for myself. So those are the kinds of things you want to be thinking about. Does that answer, Carol? I, I think it's a start. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we had another question from a, a participant previous, which says, what is the legal framework we should all have in preparation for long-term care? I think we decided at the, at the time when this came in that this was out of the reach of this particular webinar, but we will put it into the pot where we look at what are we doing for the future? Has to do with estate planning and has to do with uh, some other things that we've already had webinars or, or presentations on, but there's never uh, harm in doing some repetition. But there are some questions that have come in during the presentation. Um, the first one is uh, long-term nursing care can be provided at home for by a qualified nurse, what does nursing care include? Samantha Kelly, one of you wanna take that one? Uh, I can take if, Samantha can complement if I'm short. Um, important, yes, it could be at home, but remember the two most important things, the medical report, what your doctor is going to say, what well, you have to have a nurse by your side, okay? And it's going to be detailed and very specific. Our child medical advisor is going to review it and he has to decide how long it's going to be covered, okay? So that could be covered one month, two weeks, but be specific. Your doctor is responsible and we, we believe in what your doctor said, but put it there. And the other thing is, how much it's going to cost because we have the limit, but also you have to be aware of your limit so you can work with your own money and what is in the limit. So to, to avoid surprise, because if no, you're going to be responsible for that, as simple as, as that. You're going to have it if you choose to have it and we, we have to say no, it's going to be no, but you have the responsibility now after the service. So just keep in mind for, for this kind of service, this is the key. If you receive it and you know that it's going to say, uh, okay, Lee, that is coming. Uh, I'm going to receive it for next week. We are going to run for you, but help us with the information. Okay. Yeah, I would add to that, that it has to be related to care for a medical problem. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why. Um, we have another. Thank you, Kelly. Hey, we Samantha, have another I question. Samantha. Could I just add, Carol, if that's okay, just to compliment, to say that as long as you get us a detailed medical report and you get us a detailed costing, then what we try to do at the Secretariat is we ask the medical advisor to review it carefully. And it's always complicated for the first time that you are submitting such a request for long-term nursing, whether it's domiciliary, whether it's in a specific type of specialized home or some other home. But once we've got all of the elements together, what we try and do um, is uh, approve it for a 12 month period. Okay. Because we know, and this is sad to say, but in most cases, one's health is not going to get better. It tends to sort of de deteriorate. Um, and then the second time when you need to put a request in, so the following year, then it should be more straightforward. So I just want to reassure you, we're not here to complicate your lives, but if you make sure you submit all of the documents correctly to us, with all of the right costings, all of the medical reports, all of the details, and as you rightly say, Carol, for medical healthcare, for medical healthcare, then we will do our absolute best, as Kelly has said, we'll run around in circles to get the approval as quickly as possible. But try and do it in advance. Don't tell, don't send it to us when you've already been in the nursing car for three, three months, and you've got three months of bills, and you're thinking, golly, how am I going to pay this? Make sure you do it in advance. Thank you very much. Thank you, Samantha. I'm gonna come back to you with this next question, which is, can you please clarify, if I have to end up in a nursing home for life, will SHI reimburse the costs indefinitely? What is the criteria to have a nursing home reimbursed? Thank you. And again, this is where it comes down to, I think that we have an incredibly generous plan. If you need to be in a long-term nursing home, and it's medically justified, then we will cover the cost of that up to $100 a day until you leave this earth. And I think that's, you know, there's, there's, no, there's no cap in time on this. That benefit is there until you no longer need it. Does that answer your question, Carol? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, Next question from a participant. My mom is 94. Mentally, she's fine, but she has some health issues. She is a person for five hours at home, and she takes her to appointments, cooks for her, and helps her with daily activities. Does our insurance cover a certain percentage of that? Kelly? <laughs> Hello. No. Um, the key for this answer is, is medically needed. If it's medical needed that the nurse be with you there five hours, what she's doing, what's his responsibility on the care of the member, okay? Yeah, I know this is 90, 90 uh, two years old, but if the is going to, imagine the medical, the, the doctor have to, 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 to write the report. What he's going to justify that? No, he cannot do that. So it, it's impossible to 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 nobody to to justify uh, that expense. So the answer is no. Thank you. And the last question from the participants has to do with Kelly. If you would please post the telephone that they can reach the department. Okay. And I, my error, I put. On, on the resources of our website, I somehow slipped and put AFSM PAO and it's P A H O. Yeah. Uh, and there's put... also our email, which is AFSM P A H O at gmail.com. The first question you need to do when you have something that you can't resolve by reading the rules and understanding them is to write to shi at paho.org. Ask your question and they will respond. Kelly has been working very hard at getting response time uh, up to par. 
Yes. Uh, I put there my email address. I don't know. And I put my, that 202 is my phone. Okay. I don't know if the, my email address, I just sent it to, to Mirta Roses. I'm just going to retype this here. So the idea is, and it is, it's not just Kelly Marrero. We are a team and we are super, and every day that is mainly my, my uh, concern, uh, service response we don't have all the responses immediately but we are going to work on that so we are going to try to see what is your claim what is uh, your your authorization your approval you need it so that is our our main job so be sure that we are working to work with you so you are not alone this is a department with when everybody reach us it's because they need us and we are very clear on that. I just want to send uh, a message of understanding, okay? Of course, with compliance and costs in our uh, back, as I said at the beginning, but uh, please feel free to reach myself or any member of my team anytime. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have about three minutes left before we want to turn it over to uh, Patricia from Paho, who has been facilitating uh, uh, from the Healthy Aging Group our meeting today and wants to bring us up to what Paho is doing. But there are two questions that Martha might answer in one. Uh, one is, would it be feasible for uh, us to have a checklist of topics that one needs to consider on using a facility, a service, or to facilitate decision-making of retirees in a way to systematize some of these so that it's easier to plan. And then the second question, which is relative to that has, uh, could you comment on the availability and quality of long-term care in countries else? Could you comment on the availability and question of long-term care in countries outside the US? Home care is a probable option in lack. Uh, do you have any suggestions on how to prepare changes at home we might consider and activities that should be provided by the nurse? I think obviously there's a lot more question than we can answer today, but Martha, can you just say two words on those last two questions? Yes, first of all, a great idea. And we'll definitely uh, put together a little committee so that we'll provide some tools, some easy tools, a checklist and so forth that may be helpful in, um, in, in really reviewing or making decisions regarding long-term care. Uh, I don't promise that that's gonna get done tomorrow, but please give us a few weeks and we'll uh, do something and then send a blast mail saying check Paho's uh, website and it will be there. So, so that's one thing. Uh, the other, uh, <laughs> there was so much in that question that I don't know I can answer to it, but um, but I think it's, it's really the resources I've given you, uh, which are uh, Paho's situational analysis of long-term care, that actually gives you some information of what was going on in each country. We cannot comment on the quality facilities there, but we can comment on what PAHO has actually done in their situational analysis. And I think Patricia may want to actually comment on that. Thank you. And um, we're now going to um, turn over to Patricia Morse, who comes from uh, our unit on healthy aging. And we, as AFSM, certainly want to highlight the fact that, that we have been facilitated in the Zoom call from that, and we have very good relationships and work closely with them. Patricia? Thank you very much, Carol, and thank you very much, the AFSM, for the opportunity to be here today, to listen and to learn uh, from, from this, and also to be able to work together on this, this webinars and the activities that AFSM PAHO is promoting on healthy aging. Uh, I feel uh, very pleased to, to support and to do what I can to support because I know it's very important 
and not only for AFSM members, global members, I mean, but also other United Nations agencies, as well as other people that come through these webinars that we host and learn also from it. So uh, it's very, very good. And I very much appreciate this uh, working together with AFSM to bringing this work and this knowledge on healthy aging for, for everybody. Uh, and today's discussion, I know today was the first like closed webinars about like a very specific topic for, for PAHO's, uh, PAHO members. But uh, I would like to highlight that long-term care, oh, am I frozen? No, no, you. No? Okay. Uh, that long-term care is one of the main uh, priority actions of the decade of healthy aging. So therefore it's a priority issue for our work on not only on the decade implementation, but to achieve healthy aging in the region. And for there, I would like to highlight some points of the work that, that we are doing in not only at the regional office, but also WHO uh, as a whole. So there are two main uh, documents from WHO that are helping to guide countries on the implementation of long-term care uh, systems and, and strategies. Uh, one is the framework of a continuum of long-term care and very much stating that long-term care is part of the integrated care that we have to think about for older people because at some time in the life course and in the life trajectory, an individual might require some type of support. So we have to have that in mind when we think about an integrated continuum of care. And the other document is recently launched. We are translating it to Spanish. It's a package of long-term care uh, intervention to favor universal health coverage. So it brings long-term care in, uh, again, in a continuum of care for the different types of care that people may receive, as well as to prevent the need of long-term care, considering the different, different levels of capacities of older individuals. So this is a very good document also to position uh, long-term care into the health sector. And this is something that we've been working very much, and I really like that Carol pointed out um, while answering the, the questions that Long-term care is much more than only medical needs. And we have to think about that when we think about promoting long-term care. And when we are um, engaging with the countries on the organization of their long-term care uh, system, packages, benefits, because it goes much beyond the health sector, but health needs to be engaged. So uh, we are working now with different countries on the development of care policies in which long-term care is included, trying to bring this multi-sectoral approach, stating the need of the engagement of the health sectors, because especially in Latin America, most of the long-term care is provided and organized by social development, protection, and so there is a need to position health in there in, in long-term care and as well as uh, creating this multi-sectorial approach for long-term care. Um, for there, for that action, we are presenting the first document uh, for governing bodies. Uh, it's a policy on long-term care. The policy is already ready to the first evaluation for the executive committee in two weeks. And if approved the resolution, it's gonna be the first document in the whole WHO region to state the need of long-term care and the organization of long-term care within the health. Of course, through uh, uh, an organized governance that includes a multi-sectoral approach that has like financing, um, state and appropriate that provides support for caregivers, uh, uh, formal caregivers and informal caregivers, as well as increased data and information on long-term care so we can have uh, policies and better address the needs of this population that needs care. Um, 
also like as Marta already shared with you, the document, the situation analysis that we have, that we worked with the Inter-American Bank of Development, it's a very, uh, it's a topic of very much interest for them as well. We published a paper as well, uh, basically stating the institutional care. And I think this is interesting to, to share because especially with the questions about the difference of assisted living and nursing homes, and it shows a little bit of the institutional care in Brazil, Costa Rica, Chile, and Mexico. It's a paper, it's published in the Pajos Journal, and I'm gonna put the link on the chat when I find it because I'm looking for right now. So again, thank you very much for the opportunity. Congratulations, AFSM, for the great work and count with the Healthy Aging team to support the activities and to work together to advance the healthy aging agenda. Thank you very much. Thank you, Patricia. It's very interesting to see that with the aging population globally, we are uh, paying attention to this very important issue because it will become bigger and bigger as time goes on. Um, and uh, thank you for your cooperation, everyone. For the panelists, a special thank you to everyone and to those who made their conflict uh, minimal so they could be with us today. For all of the participants and your questions, all of the questions that have been on the chat and the information there will also be condensed and put on our website uh, when we post the information. We will let everybody know once that information is up, there will be the recording, any of the uh, PowerPoints in both languages and the uh, questions and answers that we have been able to uh, attend. Thank you, everyone. So, Carol, can, Martha. I, yeah, can I just say that uh, our next webinar, we don't have the date yet, we have asked Dr. Vega, who is a geriatric physician, to really uh, uh, do a webinar on how can we build our intrinsic capacity to delay the need for long-term care. So that's gonna be a very important webinar. We'll let you know as soon as we have a date for it. Thank you, that's exciting, Martha. Um, thank um, you so everyone, and Sorry, Carol, uh, sorry, I see on the chat that uh, Dr. Sotelo wanted to give an announcement or say something. Juan Sotelo, if possible, would like to pass some additional info. Yeah, no, it's 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 none. Uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> we're, we're, we're together, but that's that's okay. It's, it's, it looks like Sotelo. No, I just want to tell you that uh, I was in 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 Geneva and they're they're concocting a resolution, which probably will not happen until next year, on the social isolation associated with computers. In other words, the young people who are all day long, like uh, like my own sons, uh, looking at, at the computer and uh, they don't talk to each other. And even though they're more connected and more isolated than ever. So I raised the point when I was there that the situation for the elderly is even worse because not even connected electronically. So they're feeling even more isolated from everything that's going on. So I think that's an important point uh, to keep in mind for uh, Patricia and company uh that the issue of social isolation of the elderly has to be somewhat incorporated in the question of the mental health of the isolated people with the whole electronic point and I, maybe we should discuss that in another seminar but i just wanted to add that there's things happening and we have to keep in touching what's going on thank you very much thank you very good point herman uh, i can um, add to add very quickly before we close that that was a discussion in our aging uh, previous, the last meeting that we had with the group of aging in the all the regions. And actually it's a work of the social connection on on, on isolations, on, on social connection actually. And the, the aging, it's it's there, it's on the resolution and the team, it's, uh, it's a life course approach for social connection, but aging will be there. And we guarantee that. Uh, they are going to propose until June to have this resolution voted and part of the World Health Assembly for next year. So 
the social connection committee will be working with this proposal. Hopefully we'll have that discussion then next year and aging will be part of it. Great. Um, once again, I hope that we have met our goal for today and you now have basic information for planning for long-term care. Uh, we will continue to offer uh, webinars and information about this both on our website and uh, in a seminar such as today. And I hope you also have been convinced that everyone in AFSM and in SHI are working for your interests. Thank you, everyone.